was really the first film that I saw as a kid that made me really believe, hey, you know, you don't have to explain everything to an audience, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, actually, and, in fact, you, you don't have to explain anything at all. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. Hello, and welcome to May the Review Be With You with Nick and Joe. I'm Joe. And I'm Nick. And today, today on May the Review Be With You, we are coming back to our time travel draft. It has been a minute. Uh, and we're very excited for it. Today on our time travel draft, uh, we're covering Donnie Darko, beloved classic from 2000. Uh, strange, strange movie, but man, mm. is it fun to talk about. Um, mm. Nick, uh, we have a lot to talk about, but before we actually dive into any any of this, we should probably explain for anyone who is new to this, what is the time travel draft? So would you, would you be so kind? Sure. We each took turns drafting time travel movies that fit into specific categories. And um, yeah, we are currently on the superhero time travel category. And so Joe's pick during this draft was Donnie Darko, which we're going to talk about today. My pick was X-Men Days of Future Past, which we're going to talk about at some point in the near future. And uh, that's a time travel draft. And that's where we're at today. Any more curiosity on what is on our list on our respected drafts go back into our time travel draft playlist uh that nick has organized and you can start from the draft and you can catch up on uh the movies that we've rated so far as well as the scoring uh that's been uh allotted out to both of us per movie i i think i don't remember the exact score right now but i'm pretty sure nick is winning our time travel draft at the moment um, and I don't think today you, is going to do me any favors no. in, in catching me up. No, this is, <laughs> this is going to be tragic for you. The explain, the, the, uh, this is just going to be tragic for Joe. We, we do, uh, you should explain the ratings maybe if you want to. Uh, well, you, or, right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, so a crucial part of the time travel draft is of course, how we are going to score each other on these movies. And we're breaking our ratings down into three separate categories. And the being, uh, those being, uh, how the movie actually performs, you know, whether or not the movie's premise actually makes sense and it is a good movie, right? We're starting from there. Then from that point, uh, we judge it based on the time travel mechanic. Is the time travel, is it all just a bunch of bullshit or <laughs> does the time travel movie actually justify why we are moving through time? And then finally, we are talking about whether or not the movie fit in the category it was drafted in. And again, as a reminder, today's category is superhero time travel movie. Just a quick call to subscribe. Guys, if you like the content that we're putting out here, if this is the sort of thing that you're into, hit subscribe, hit that bell, so you can keep up to date with what we are doing here on the channel. Everything, every bit of support helps. So thank you so much for those who do. Here on May of the Review Be With You, we like to kick things off with our films with a quick 15-second summary, and I believe it is Nick's turn no. of a long tradition where we embarrass <laughs> ourselves in trying to summarize a movie as fast as we can in 15 seconds. And it's Nick's turn, as I said. Nick, how you doing? How you feeling? Uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be this, it, it, this is gonna be miserable. Like you couldn't even ask the director to summarize this in a year. So like you know, this is gonna be this is gonna be rough. Like, he did it in, like, what was it, 28 days? He did it in 28 days. Got the whole movie done. Well, Donnie <laughs> did. I don't know I don't know how fast Richard Kelly did. There's no way that this was filmed in 28 days. Well, maybe. 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 <laughs> 28 days, uh, what is it, uh, 6 hours, 42 minutes, 6 seconds? Is that what we're doing? You're so close. Yeah, uh, it's 12 seconds. Ah. I'm I'm impressed. I didn't think you would remember that. It's very important to the time travel of this whole film. Just kidding. It actually, um, is. <laughs> it's a little it's a little important, I guess. All right, just count me in. All right, so I've got I've got our stopwatch. Nick, are you ready for the 15 second summary of Donnie Darko? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, sure. All right, <laughs> when I say go. Three, two, one, go. Donnie Darko is a teenager in 1988, I think, and uh, he's either schizophrenic or a time traveler. We're not sure, but he gets a message from a weird, crazy-looking rabbit that the world is going to end in 28 days, so he has to go on this like whole journey to save the world uh, before he gets killed by a airplane engine. Let's go. <laughs> Whoa! Tell me Whoa. that's not 
That was immaculate. No, that was like the best summary I think you've ever done. And it was for a movie you didn't want to watch. I did want to watch it. I liked the, it's I, insane. Yeah, I'm insane. feeling a lot of negativity over here on my pick. All There's right? no negativity. It's just that you're just not going to score very well when it comes to time see, travel see, and the explanation. About. This, see, see, this is what I'm talking about. I, I want nothing but stellar positivity from you about how, like, how great of a movie at a time you had with such a beloved I class. Do, I, do love the, I do love this film. But when we're talking <laughs> about time travel, there's a lot. That, I got some questions. And mm-hmm. there's not a lot of answers. <laughs> <laughs> I assure you, everything can be explained in this movie. I assure Ooh, you. We're going to see, but how about my summary? Give me my, give me my A+. Plus. This, yeah, no, like, Nick, this was- is, I think this is the, I, I think this is the first A+, plus I'm giving you. Yep. I don't think I've ever given you one before. That was a really good summary. I'm actually It was, it was the shocked. best summary you've ever done, A+. Plus. Which I think that's only the second A plus that's ever been awarded on this show. It's big time. You should go back. Usually, our fifteen second summaries are tragedies. Uh, uh, they're I'm they're genuine genuine Fs. I think only there's only been one F. I think I got it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what it was for, but I definitely have an F on my report card here. Yeah, I forget what that. Well, I forget what yours was for as well. R- regardless, we'll that up. Anyway, tune in next time to find out what I failed it. <laughs> In any case, okay. So, Nick, that was great. I don't think we actually have to dive any deeper into a summary here, uh, ex- except with the fact that he does die, right? And the, he does save the world. Um, we'll get into that later. Um, but this is, as I said, it's a movie by Richard Kelly. Uh, it's from the 2000s, uh, from 2000. And when it first came out, I don't think it was much, it made too much of a, a blip on the radar and it wasn't till about maybe five or six years later where it really became a cult classic it started to become a cult classic um it is a cult classic today um and it, it's really gained like a huge following uh as, as far as like the weirdness of this movie uh feels like a lot of people love to like talk about what they think happened in this movie um but uh nick Let's start with you. What uh, what did you like about this movie? Oh, Jake Gyllenhaal like is phenomenal. He's and this is he's so young when he when he filmed this, and I mean it's it's so focused on his character, right? I mean he has insane amount of screen time. I mean it, it, the movie is literally titled after his character, so like he he is he's like in every scene, right? And he's just such a phenomenal job acting and. It's really just enthralling and quirky and weird and strange and uncomfortable at times, but like not the uncomfortable that makes you want to turn it off. It's the uncomfortable that makes you like really just like, what is this kid doing and why? <laughs> um, so that's really just what stood out to me and then and what I really liked. And of course, some other things that you, you, you realize, you know, this comes out in 2001 and the cast is pretty stellar, you know, it, like. Maggie Gyllenhaal also on, on, on in the in the in the movie. Um, Seth Rogen, a young Seth Rogen, is in this film. I totally forgot about that. Patrick Swayze. Um, I there's mean, a young, there's a young and very unimportant Ashley Tisdale in this movie too. Right. Yeah, there's so many young actors. Yeah, and and so that was really cool. I always love when we watch like older films because you know like those roles are not huge roles for those character for those actors. And so you get to see them like when they were really young or kind of starting out. So that was fun. If I had been a, an adult when this movie came out and I saw Jake performing as a kid, I'd been like, this guy's going somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, he, he really is what I think carries this movie in a lot of ways, uh, his performance. Um, and then there's the strangeness of, of the film itself. Um, but like you said, you know, Donnie is most of this movie and yet, the movie, I think, does a really great job in creating this cast of characters that are also quirky and interesting in this town uh, that feels very real, very believable in, in a lot of ways. Um, and then, you know, Frank the Rabbit is is enigmatic and terrifying and interesting, and you want to know what the hell is going on there. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's sort of what I loved about it. I loved, uh, I think it was really the first film that I saw as a kid that made me really believe hey you know you don't have to explain everything to an audience you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and actually you, in fact you you don't have to explain anything at all <laughs> yeah you know yeah you're shit um 
unless you're watching the director's cut. <laughs> yeah, in which case it like walks you through everything. Yeah. Um, I, I do recommend anyone who has ever seen Donnie Darko and like sort of liked it to watch the director's cut. It it does give some interesting insight into the movie. Um, but uh, Nick, what what uh what didn't you like about Donnie Darko? I don't know if there's it's really necessarily a dislike. It's just that it's so jumbled in some ways, like this, the writing and like, and it's, but it's meant to be, but it's, 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 it borderline, it's borderline on like confusing confusion to like almost the opposite of being entertaining because you're like, nothing makes sense. And I was watching the director's cut recently, right? Like the theatrical version. I mean, it's like, impossible in some ways to really kind of think through it, at least on the first watch. So that's not really a dislike. It's more of just like, I guess, an observation. I will say though, I found myself at multiple moments thinking, you can't say that anymore. You can't say that. <laughs> There's some oh my jokes. God. There. Yeah, his friends, his friends yeah. say some shit. <laughs> yeah, his friends say some things that you just cannot do. Like that was like, I was like, oh man, early 2000s were just insane time. time. Actually, and this reminds me, the bully, not Seth Rogen, not him, but his his pal. His friend, yeah. I hated that character. Like, such an over, like, over-the-top bully for a high schooler with, it, like, holding up the knife, trying to, like, like multiple times. Like, that's not how bullies operate. <laughs> like, it just... Yeah, I, I actually agree with this. I think the he's the top. weakest character. Yeah. Um, he's so unstable, and, like, I don't understand what. <laughs> like, yeah. like, he... He doesn't at any given time. Nothing he says really makes any sense. Yeah, and it, I, I, nor is it important to the story at all. Like you right. can remove his character completely, and it does not have any effect on Donnie Darko, like at all. At, like, at least in my opinion. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. You can you can still have um, uh, Gretchen get killed by the car without without him being involved in it whatsoever. Right. Um, yeah. Well, okay, so maybe. It's, yeah okay we can debate the ending here but like he he does sort of play it's it's a small role and it feels like you could amend this in the writing pretty easily but i mean he his role is he's stopping donnie from saving gretchen right yeah uh gretchen's destiny is to be hit by the car um at least in that timeline that's what's supposed to happen and he's threatening Donnie's life and therefore Donnie can't get up and he can't go save her. Uh, so like maybe like one of the, I don't know, we can get into it toward the end, but yeah, I agree. The bully character is weak. Um, you know, at least, at least for me, I've never had this dislike before until rewatching it recently. So I love Drew Barrymore's character. Um, but there are things about her character that like, don't make any sense to me. <laughs> um, and, and I don't, get how she gets away with the sit next to uh whatever oh. boy you think is cutest yeah, so like all a, right yeah. this, this is how you know it this movie was written by a man yeah um <laughs> in the early 2000s too i can't do that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this would never happen um i don't may, maybe i missed something or i i didn't remember something i don't really get why she's being fired toward the end um I think it's a curriculum. Th it's a curriculum thing because she wants. Okay, to that's that's what. Oh, that's right. It was the por It was the pornography in, yeah, in, the, in, the, in book. the book. That's right. In that's one of the right. books. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's right. Um, but yeah, we we spend a lot of time with that character. Um, and I I don't know. I I think ultimately is to see that like her life is going to hell and like there's something about the Donnie experience that like improves her life, but I don't really see how. Um. And again, that's part of the ending. We'll get into that later. Um, I think ultimately, I think, I think for how mysterious this movie is, and how for how much it doesn't want to answer questions, I, I think, I think it's a very entertaining film. Um, I don't know if I regard it to be an extremely good film. Um, I think it's okay. I think the theatrical version is like just okay. Honestly, I think what has kept it in the zeitgeist is just how mysterious it is, right? Yeah. It's just a very mysterious plot. Yeah. Um, and for that, I think it pulls that off very well. Past that, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I, I think overall, from a film perspective, it's it's not fantastic. 
Right. It's but, interesting. But it's very interesting and it leaves so many questions that are fun to talk about. And that's why you yeah. get the cold classic, right? That's all you that's also why people love talking about Twelve Monkeys. Although Twelve Monkeys I think is a better film overall, but there's a lot of que- my point is the question marks at the end of that movie are you're like wait what just happened like what's happening how did we get here what is time travel it's kind of similar here it's like you're just mind bending trying to figure out how this all kind of pieces together um and yeah, yeah the 12 monkeys is probably a better film ultimately i think so um, but yeah. but both like i said both really uh mind bending and if you're wondering what the hell we're talking about go back and watch our 12 monkeys video <laughs> Watch 12 Monkeys. I'm like, hey, oh, what? Uh, Absolutely watch 12 Monkeys. <laughs> In that order, watch our review, then watch 12 Monkeys. Yeah, actually, it might, might help. <laughs> so we got to talk about the time travel. Okay, so the time travel is explained as follows. Uh, you need a metal craft. Uh, you need to be moving faster than the speed of light. And you need a portal. And that's it. And you can time travel. And that's what happens. Um, I, I feel like of the movies that we got, this was the best and simplest laid out time travel that we've received so far. Sure. At least the pro the process. Does it execute the process? We can talk about that. And we're yeah, going we're to. We're going. Yeah. But but at least for I think in in what it's trying to communicate as far as why it's possible, I think it does an effective job. It does an effective job of telling us what we need and then presenting those things, but does it show us? <laughs> we don't even know how half of those things even came to be. Plus, I don't know if we want to start getting into this now, but like, you need the me- metal object, you need a portal, and you need to be f- traveling faster than the speed of light. Well, at the end of the film, <laughs> Donnie doesn't have any of those things on his possession. No, that's not true. No, he has one. He has, or no, he should, he should have two. There's one of those things though that I don't understand how he gets. Um, so the metal, the metal vehicle is the car that he's driving. Okay. Fine. And, and we know he's heading toward a portal. It's the twister that he sees in the distance. Right. Um, that, that's the portal. The moving faster than the speed of light. Okay. Now here's the BS of this movie. Okay. So our, our scientist is very rad, cool, uh, physics professor that he has at this school uh, tells him about, like, theoretically, if we're talking about time travel, this is how it would happen, right? And at no point does this educated scholar ever tell Donnie, is it, it's impossible to move faster than the speed of light based on the mechanics that we have in our universe, right? It's like, yeah, that is how you would do it, but it's impossible. <laughs> But like he just lays it out there. He's just like, oh yeah, those are those are the basics of time travel. Everything you need. Hey, future Joe editor here. Uh, so from this point, Nick and I really dive into the time travel and the ending of Donnie Darko and what we believe the ending actually was. It's about a 20 minute conversation. So it's been stricken from this video. However, it does exist in its own video to see that and to find out what we believe is the true ending of this movie and what it's trying to tell us. Click the link in the description. Okay. Back to the video. Ratings. Okay, so as explained before, we break this down into three categories. Uh, how we would judge the movie as just just a work of art, how uh, it works, uh, how time travel works, and then, of course, how it works in the category. Um, Nick, I, I, I'm usually pretty polite. I'm going to selfishly go first here uh, for, for how this movie works uh, out of five. Um, I think the characters are what sell this movie. It certainly isn't the plot. The plot makes very little sense. And it's, it's, oh, I've watched this movie so many times, which is why I probably have a lot of convictions on it. But overall, there's, there's problems with it so many. Um, but I enjoy the characters and I enjoy talking about it. And I do think that those are points worth weighing in the movie's favor as a work of art. Um, I can't go higher than a three, though. I really can't. So I'm, I'm sticking with a three on it. And this is just overall score? Overall score. Just from a movie perspective. Yeah, just from a movie wow, perspective. Wow, I'm surprised you went with a three. Too um, high or too low? Too low. Mm. I was going to give it like a 3.5 is my score. Just overall as a movie. Like enjoyable. Um, a lot of fun. 
awesome. Really good. I mean, the acting was was fantastic. Jake Gyllenhaal's like crazy good. Um, and yeah, there's a sh- there's a shit ton of problems like with the explanations, but uh, it keeps you it keeps you it keeps you in. So yeah, um, yeah, three and a half. I for the record. I can't go higher than a three, but I also would watch the fuck out of a movie that is a three, for the record. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I can still love a three. Um, okay. Now this is where it gets interesting. Uh, Nick, I, I think you're the one who's rearing to go here. Uh, how do you rate this? How do you rate the time travel of this movie? Oh, God. The time travel of this movie. <sighs> We don't have a lot of movies left either, so I don't have to be like I don't have the I don't have to worry about the scale getting off. This is gonna be bad for you. One point two five. Whoa, that was the boat. That was an interesting decimal. <laughs> One point two five. Explain yourself. I don't have to because the movie didn't either. <laughs> Damn it! Walked into that one. Yeah, you did, man. You really walked set me up for that. that. Listen. They give us the needs to be metal, needs to be speed of light, <laughs> needs to be a portal. Portal, yeah. But they don't. One of those things is not even possible. One of the other, and the other thing is they don't tell us like we don't know how the portal got there. It's just supposed to show up, like blah blah blah. And then we don't even see the time travel happen. We don't see any kind of like. You know, at least in Terminator, you see a portal open. You see him go through the portal and come. Or twelve monkeys, right? Twelve monkeys, same, like same kind of concept. You, you just see him at see least him like go through. Yeah. He had nothing here. He just all of a sudden he's in his bed and he's getting crushed by a jet engine at the end of the movie. It's like, oh, he time traveled. Like, I guess. <laughs> That's so. Maybe one point two five is a little harsh, but I, I don't. I don't. Uh, can't change it. Can't change it. Believe me. <laughs> I think it's more happening in his head than time travel honestly i'm sorry mm. i apologize mm. that is a theory that is a theory after having this discussion this is why I, I i love this exercise after having this discussion i think my opinion on the concept of the time travel in this movie has changed because it <laughs> is time travel for the record um <laughs> let the record show the man was reading the philosophy of time travel, not the philosophy of having a mental breakdown before you die, um, which actually it was kind of the same thing uh, based on the book. Um, <laughs> You're not obeying your own rules about show me, not tell me. The book is telling you, but they're not showing you. <laughs> and you're still refusing to believe it. <laughs> what, the, what the writer insists that this movie is about. <laughs> the writer's wrong. Um, but I, but I, I do agree uh, that movies are a uh, an art of a visual art, right? So if that is the case, if there is going to be time travel, show me the time travel, right? So for that, and for not properly explaining how Donnie moves at the speed of light, I think I'm correct about what my theory is, which is why I said it. Um, (laughs) But you didn't show me any of that, and you certainly didn't tell me that. Um, So it's pretty weak here. Um, I'm going to give it a one. Oh, man, I was nice to you. <laughs> and I believe it's time travel. That's crazy. That's such a... I feel like your score should be higher just for me believing it's time travel, but I guess not. I... I, I as I as I talk it out, I, I think... I think on paper, what they explain is good, right? It's very simple. But what they show and that what they actually do... Different. Dif- different. And doesn't... And like, and there's a lot before the montage that is very confusing. Like, for years, I, I thought the airplane was the thing that was traveling through time. For years, and as I watched it for as an adult, it was like, no, wait, that doesn't make any sense. It's not the airplane. It can't be the airplane. It's just part of the airplane is going through, and then so is Donnie. But like, we never see that. So yeah, this is the weirdest movie to rate. Like now that I'm watching it, it's the weirdest movie to rate the time travel for. It's time. The movie is it's time travel. But we don't see the time travel. We just see the end result. Yep. Right. Um. I'm I'm sticking with it. I I, I think of, of the movies that we have seen so far, I think that this has been the weirdest concept. Not the weirdest concept. Actually, the concept's great. The weirdest visual of time travel that yeah. we've seen because it's it's not existent. Yeah, I think it's definitely the toughest one to unpack for sure so far. Superhero. 
how well does it fit into the category of superhero? Oh, baby, this is a five. Are you kidding me? Oh, this my is God. A superhero. A five? This is, this a is a five? five? Are you delusional? Yeah. Have you been oh, drinking? Right to the other end oh, of the spectrum. my God. Oh, my How can God. you even argue oh, that it's five. not a superhero movie? He has superpowers. He has the superhero name. He saved the world. Like, he saves the girl. Like, what else do you need? Are you really giving it a five? I'm really giving it a five. Joe's, Joe, Joe's down bad in this time travel draft, everyone, just so you know. He's got he's to gotta just, like, grasp over here. Just pull it out of his, you know what? I just locked it, it in. I just locked it in. You locked it five. five. Okay, listen. I'm generously going to give you a four for superhero that's category. That's a nice score. You actually changed my mind. The movie changed my mind about him actually maybe having superpowers. And, you know, his name being Donnie Darko does help with believing it he's definitely oh, got sorry. some superpowers we, kind of suicide squad? we don't know how many superpowers he has he's got some the problem though is the superpowers he has are in that pocket of the movie that happens in the pocket universe which might be happening in his head which then means he really doesn't actually have superpowers so i'm not 100 percent sure he is a superhero but his name is donnie darko no matter what part of the movie we're in. <laughs> so because your score is already locked in, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Um, my one thing about his superpowers, and he definitely does have them, the movie is so wildly inconsistent about when yeah. he has superpowers. Because, like, there are two times when the bully is on him. At least the first time you could make maybe make the argument that, like, oh, he just doesn't want to fight the bully. But the second time, he definitely does, because he wants to save Gretchen. So why isn't he using his super strength that he definitely had earlier in the film? <laughs> um, it, it just doesn't... I mean, the only argument I can think of there, and this is a stretch, is because the pocket universe... Because the he talks about destiny earlier in the movie, right? And, like, he knows that Gretchen is destined to die. He saw it in her weird liquid tube thing, right? She, he knows she's going to die. Um and he's not liquid. he's not allowed to stop it he's not supposed to stop it yeah. so therefore he can't stop it that's the only explanation i can come up for that um but again the movie is insisting on you making those grasps instead of giving you any sort of explanation there are no rules as far as his superpowers are concerned I forgot. anyway that's all the time we got yeah <laughs> i forgot about the stupid port the stupid Things coming out of their bodies. Yeah, the tubes. Oh, God, the yeah. tubes. Jesus. Yeah. yeah I don't want to talk about those. We're not talking about those. We're, 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 yeah, anyway. that, was, that, was, that was a choice. That, my friends. This is a time travel draft episode. That was insane. <laughs> what, <laughs> what a way to end. Um, uh, no, that, that will do it for us uh, today. Um, however, next time, uh, we will be covering the finale of Agatha All Along, which also just had its very own time travel episode. Yes. Uh, and I am so excited to talk to you about that, Nick. Yes. Um, I forgot to mention that this is coming out during Halloween week, which was another bonus point for Donnie Darko being reviewed because it is a Halloween-y movie. Yes. Um, and we will be finishing Halloween with Agatha All Along uh, next week. Uh, so double the Halloween-ness. Love that. Uh, if you are interested in getting our feedback, our review on Agatha All Along before the episode comes out. Nick, what's the best way to do that? Well, go ahead and hit subscribe uh, there. Um, keep up with everything we're doing here on YouTube. And then also um, you can find us on your podcast, favorite podcast platform. And of course, we're on threads at May the Review Be With You, where we're talking about everything that is happening uh, on streaming and Instagram at the same handle. So until next time, friends. May the review be with you. Peace. Peace.